Hello. I was kind of pleased with how I did my last alphabet adventures. Not entirely, but sort of. So I'm going to try it again for this one, which is Liverpool. So I think I'm going to split it up, in which case this is part one. Also, I traveled with Megabus, so I will be reviewing them throughout and then again sort of at the end of either this video or the videos. So for this one at least, I was a little bit more prepared. My notes are a bit more organized. Not a lot, but we'll see how this goes. So me being me went to bed really rather late and got up at 5.30, leaving me with about four hours of sleep, maybe even less. So that was fun, but the sunrise was gorgeous. I don't think I took a video of it, but I really liked it. So then we got on the bus. That was all fine, very easy. At this point, because I got very lost from the tube station where I got out and then the coach station, I only got there at maybe half past, even though I wanted to be there, or no, I wanted to be there at half past, and I got there maybe at 35 past, so for me again, very late, and the bus left at like nine o'clock, and I stood in line, but you didn't have to, there were seats, and people could sit down, but I just thought, I'm gonna stand, and I just had like the ticket on my phone, and I showed it, and that was fine, they took my bag and said, which stop are you getting off at, and I was like, Liverpool, and that was it. Now, I honestly do not know how Megabus makes money, because I think I spent about five pounds on each way, maybe a little bit more. And there was free Wi-Fi. There were charger points, which was fantastic. There were plenty of spare seats. I think nearly there was only one person per row or something like that, not entirely, but, and I just honestly don't understand how, you know, that pays for the petrol and the Wi-Fi and the fuel and everything. But I mean, for someone like me, it's great because I'm living life on a budget, but, I don't quite understand where that money comes from. Okay, so it was a six hour bus ride and I was sitting at the front because I really like having the view and whatever. And there was a spare seat next to me because as I said, quite an empty bus and who wants to sit next to a stranger when you can sit anywhere else. So I had the charging points next to me. That is one thing though, the window seats I think only had charger points, the aisle seats did not. So if you're going with mega bus, Keep that in mind. But anyway, across like the other side of the aisle, there were two people and they were rather loud. They were listening to videos without headphones and they were chewing crisps and whatever with their mouth open. And it just irked me a little bit. It wasn't the worst because thank God I also had headphones, but it's one of those things of just be respectful of everyone else around you. Like bring headphones, chew with your mouth closed. Maybe just don't bring crisps onto a six hour bus ride, but that's okay. I also just want to say at one point I dropped my phone and it fell sort of behind my seat and the person behind me picked it up for me. So thank you to whoever that was. I don't think I said a proper thank you. So yay. Okay. So this is on the way there. The Wi-Fi fell out about halfway through. Once we got to about Birmingham, I think it started to go weird and it just didn't work. And the airco was on, I think the entire bus ride and it did get a little bit chilly, but not cold just uncomfortable so that you kind of felt warm and you kind of felt cold and like nothing was right. So what I did learn for the way back and for you guys and for anyone else, bring layers, like wear stuff that you can take on and off because it does fluctuate a bit. Okay, now at the first stop, which was Coventry, the bus stop was closed because I think there was something going on and it wasn't terrible or anything but the bus driver did seem to get a little bit aggressive. And from my research actually before, because I did do a research to figure out if I wanted to go with Megabus or National Express, it seems like very often the Megabus drivers aren't so friendly. So in my experience on the way there, I did, I always get nervous when people are a little bit aggressive, like drivers or uh, have road rage or anything like that. So I didn't love that. For me personally, that just made me a little bit uncomfortable. But again, it was fine. It wasn't dangerous or anything. It just me personally doesn't like it when people are shouting while they're driving. So then we got to Liverpool and the bus stopped in a very central location, which was great. But I have to say it was really weird because it wasn't like a proper, okay, you have arrived at your destination. Thank you. And you exit through all these weird things. No, it was just like any other bus stop. And they were like, here's your bag. Have fun. So then my friend said, meet me at the Tate Modern. I need to explain this. I went to Liverpool because my friend from Australia came, but she wasn't coming down to London because she was only there for a week for her cousin's wedding. And so 
she actually was staying in Manchester, but she came down to Liverpool for two days, three days. And so I met her there. And so she was with her father and she messaged me saying, meet us at Tate Gallery. Uh, so I did. And it was about a four minute walk, I think, maybe less, except I got lost. And I was very unsure because I had to walk all the way down the dock. And I just wasn't sure if that was right. So that was a bit awkward on my part, but it was literally across the road. So that was perfect location. And when I got into the Tate Gallery, I just sort of looked around and I was like, I don't know if this is the right place. I don't know where I'm meant to meet her. Anyway, so I'm like looking around, looking around. And then my friend yells at my name from the gift shop, which is like all the way over there. And I saw her and it was very nice because I haven't seen her in quite a while, so yay. So then we actually went inside the gallery and we honestly didn't really pay much attention. It, it wasn't a very exciting exhibition from what we did see. And like I said in my last video, I am not one to appreciate art as much as another person. I do appreciate it, but other people probably care a little bit more. And we were just excited to see each other and we were talking and catching up, sort of saying, you know, what have you been doing for the last two and a half months? So for us, it was nice, but I don't think the actual gallery was very special. And the truth is, her father th thought the same thing. And I don't know how much into art he is, but he also said, like, it's, it's not a very special exhibition or anything. So then we went to their flat, which was back towards the bus station and then maybe a minute's walk to the right, depending which way you come from. And so very, very close, I think it was a five minute walk. And the flat where we were staying was gorgeous. There is no other word to describe it. You got up and as you walk in, it was our room. Like I, my friend and I were sharing a room and it had huge windows and just the most gorgeous view. And then you walked out back out of the room and along the corridor and then to your right was sort of a kitchen, a dining room, and a living room. Again, with huge windows, again, with this beautiful view because we were up six floors and overlooking sort of the entire central area of Liverpool. And I don't think there is much else for Liverpool, to be honest. And it was just so pretty. And of course, the location was just perfect because it was in the center. And then my friend's father brought Tim Tams. Yay! I haven't had Tim Tams in so long and I forgot how much I missed them. So then we were sitting there, had some tea, whatever, and then her father fell asleep because he'd come from Australia that morning. So he was exhausted. And we, my friend and I went to get some snacks because she really wanted British chocolate. And we just walked along, sort of got a little bit lost, but it was fine. It was fun, it was nice. The sunset was again, beautiful. And as you probably know by now, I am obsessed with sunsets. And oh, it was just so pretty. And I kind of said to her towards sunset time, we should sort of try and head back to the flat now so we get the beautiful view of the sunset. And we did, and it was insane. Now, to finish off the day, we had supper at, and this is what I've written down, place. Because I cannot remember where we went to eat supper. Honestly, it was okay. It wasn't very exciting. And they definitely had some vegetarian options, but not a lot and all very sort of interesting, exciting type foods, which I don't really like. I like simple, I like basic, I like not a lot of flavors. So as in I can eat anything, that's fine, but I just don't like it all mixed together. And there were definitely some good dishes. There was a cauliflower dish, which was, we all loved that one the most, it was so good, but otherwise it was nothing special. Okay, that's the end of day one. And this is a 15 minute video, so I probably will split this up into parts. I would also just like to point out, I got to Liverpool at maybe 2, 2.30. So the day only started, sort of, we only had half a day.